Hi, my name is Yuri Habits, and together with James Greenhalgh, we're going to speak today about mobile performance and how to improve it using Unity Burst Compiler. I work at Unity, and during the last seven years, I was focused on the CPU performance of ARM-based platforms, namely Android. And today I'm happy to present here at ARM Dev Summit a technology that helps improve performance greatly, and I mean Burst. Unity is the world's leading platform for creating and operating interactive real-time 3D content. Our platform provides a comprehensive set of software solutions to create and operate interactive real-time 2D and 3D content for mobile phones, tablets, PCs, consoles, and augmented and virtual reality devices. At Unity, we believe that a world with a better, is a better place with more creators in it. This philosophy is centered around serving creators and is the beating heart of our, of our company. It motivates each and every one of us to serve the global creator community, to help solve the toughest engineering data and operational problems so that digital creators can create and operate real-time 3D experiences. Every day we work to improve our engine to bring the latest in cheap and IP innovation to our community of creators. So far, Unity reached 3 billion devices with all the content made in our platform just in the last 12 months. And that content was installed 33 billion times in the last 12 months. It equals to 1,102 installs per second. And it's more than just volume. Our creators find success across mobile platforms. Unity powers 7 out of 10 of the top games in the major app stores. ARM and Unity have partnered uh, together to improve performance on the billion of mobile devices that make up the Android ecosystem. We are doing this to allow developers to, sp uh, to spend more time creating awesome content through improved performance by default and a great developer experience when targeting ARM-based devices. Through our partnership, ARM and Unity are planning to enhance the power of tools available for Unity and Android to further complement the gains in multi-core processor performance from ARM's latest processor designs. We're looking at making a real impact on the experience mobile games developers have when targeting ARM platforms, from improved profiling and graphics games performance uh, through to better compiler technology, more easily available to target ARM's current and future architecture technologies. The best thing about working on compiler technology is a chance to improve performance by default across a huge range of projects. What we would like to talk about today is how you can make use of compiler technologies in your Unity projects to bring out the best of the uh, ARMv8 architecture and unlock the performance of the devices on which your games will run. So what is Burst Compiler? Burst is a compiler technology that converts a subset of IL.NET bytecode to highly optimized native code using LLVM for Unity apps. Highly optimized native code output means that you're going to get better performance, and in some cases, much better performance. This is why Burst plays a central role in the Unity's performance by default principle. Unit Burst is primarily designed to work with the Unity's uh, job system and the new data-oriented tech stack, or DOTS. What is really important, Burst is not a general purpose compiler. It's a part of Unity and is made to make your Unity games run faster. It supports a wide range of platforms starting from desktop to consoles and most importantly mobiles, iOS and Android, which we're going to focus on in this talk. So let's move on and see why is Burst actually faster? Uh, if you think of it for a moment, you'd, you'd probably say, why not just use LLVM and let it produce native code? Well, first of all, LLVM doesn't have C-sharp support at the moment, and C-sharp is the language of choice for Unity for a number of reasons. It's capable of solving most problems and delivering top performance at the same time. You may say, okay, but Unity already has a technology that converts C-sharp into C++ code, that is later being compiled into machine code and the result is faster than running in mono, and I mean IELTS CPP. Why do we need one more intermediate step? Well, IELTS CPP is a wider concept, while Burst is deeper. IELTS CPP has a wider C-sharp feature support, while Burst does more analysis and optimizations of a smaller fraction of your code. 
As mentioned before, Burst is not a general purpose compiler, so it has a necessary knowledge of the Unity APIs that allows for optimizations that a normal compiler won't be able to deliver. For example, Burst knows that native arrays don't overlap in memory or don't alias, which allows to vectorize your code. James will talk about vectorization in detail later. Burst also knows your hardware, because for optimal results, you'd need to specify the target CPU. And in a typical Unity style, we provide you the possibility to handwrite your assembly code if for some reasons you're not satisfied with the default output. For that, we expose hardware intrinsics. So if you take a step back and look at these two items, does it remind you of anything? There was a remarkable talk by Mike Acton called Data-Oriented Design and C++. What Mike said is know your hardware, know your data, and you will get maximum performance, and Burst does possess this knowledge. So here is another difference between Burst and IELTO CPP. Burst is targeted towards data-oriented design, while IELTO CPP has a better support of object-oriented techniques. Now onto some details about how Burst actually make, does its magic. So you write your C-sharp game code, and then you click Build. The code is compiled into a .NET assembly, which has an extension of DLL. This assembly consists of uh, .NET Intermediate Language Code, or IL, and could be run on a mono virtual machine. Burst analyzes and manipulates that code and converts it into LLVM Intermediate Representation Language, or LLVM IR. This is where the knowledge of Unity APIs by Burst kicks in. Then a custom build of LLVM is used to compile and optimize that code. Finally, a platform linker is used to generate the output library. In the case of Android, it's named lib underscore burst underscore generator dot so. This is a compilation pipeline, or what we call the AOT compilation, or ahead of time compilation. Uh, it is used when you build a game. In the runtime, it, the calls to the bursted functions are being routed to these output native library instead of just calling the .NET code from the initial assembly. Burst also works in the Unity editor when you enter the play mode. We call this just-in-time compilation. It uses a similar pipeline with some features that are specific to the editor. So what do you need to start using Burst in your project? Burst is available as a package in the Unity package manager, so you need to add the package to your project. Then you write your code in C Sharp around job system and ECS, like this super simple job I've written here at the left. Then a single line of code is needed. Uh, you can see this burst compile attribute at the right. And this is it. You just need to add the burst compile attribute, and you're done. Please note that if, you, if your type and the function does not, are not marked with the burst compile attribute, then your code will not be bursted, meaning that we don't burst all the code by default uh, yet. Uh, for most advanced users who want to take control uh, over the output assembly for the hottest loops, we provide Neon Intrinsics. This is an API which is very close to the ARM C language extensions and allows you to, ex to express in HP C Sharp what you'd like to see in the assembly output. As you can see, the main calculation APIs are absolutely the same in C, in C and C Sharp. So C code is on the left and C Sharp code is on the right, uh, which makes it easier, uh, which makes the C Sharp API easier for those who are already uh, familiar with the C API, uh, or makes, for example, a port of your high performance C code into C Sharp easier. The C Sharp API is a bit more flexible from the type standpoint because it has its generic V128 type to express a 128-bit vector. This is why you see a pointed the reference here on the right instead of a VOD1 call. But in the end, it's translated into the same, same assembly instructions. Please note that the code calling into burst neon intrinsics is wrapped with a is neon supported check. We're looking forward for your high performance code written in burst neon intrinsics. And to summarize what you've just seen, Burst is free performance. Like, really? Of course, it has some limitations. So first of all, it works only with a subset of C-sharp language, which we call HP C-sharp or high-performance C-sharp. To get rid of the garbage collection, it doesn't support reference types, 
namely classes. Second, it takes some time to compile because the more you optimize, the slower your compile times. This is a serious issue that our team is working hard to solve by introducing different layers of caching and other techniques. Third, it requires a native linker. In our case, it's Android NDK. Since you already need it to build with Unity and IELTS CPP script in backend, this is not really a big deal. And finally, debugging is an issue because we basically replaced a call to a managed function by a call into a native bursted function. Good news is that with burst 1.3, you have a debugging support, so make sure you are using the latest burst package version if possible. Done with the theory, now let's jump onto a device and see the performance gains in practice. So we've built a demo with three playgrounds using Unity Physics, which is a stateless lightweight engine written in C-sharp with source code available. We selected Unity Physics as a core demo component because it, it is math heavy and naturally benefits greatly from burst and vectorized code. The camera and the interactions are all scripted, so no one touches the screen. We built the project for Android and two with two versions, one with burst enabled, another with burst disabled. You can see it on the video side by side. So I made this video for easier comparison of the two cases. It is built using Unity 2019.3 and the latest version of the burst package. The script in backend is IELTO CPP. It is targeting 64-bit ARM and is running on a Samsung Galaxy S10 phone EU version with Exynos and Mali. The phone is in a thermal condition that is very close in both parts of the demo in a cool down state after some five minutes of rest. So you can see that the difference in the frame time is at least two X with burst being faster, obviously. Uh, and please make note that quite some rendering has happened here with which is CPU heavy. In a thermally throttled state, the difference stays about the same, but I must say that it takes much longer for the bursted version to make a device to start to throttle. As you can see in some scenes, the difference comes up to 4x, and that's outstanding result really, which allows you to handle more content in your games or to lower down the power consumption with the same content, meaning longer battery life, less overheating during long game sessions, and greener planet. So, that's a burst compiler. It is available today in the Unity editor when targeting Android devices and is capable of greatly improving the performance of your projects. Burst is a great technology for exploiting hidden parallelism in your applications and is particularly helpful for games and applications making use of physics and machine learning algorithms. A really great thing about Burst is that it allows you to make use of the powerful Neon technology already available on ARM-based devices. At this point, I would like to hand, uh, hand over the presentation to James. Thanks, Yuri. And thanks for inviting me to talk with you about what our teams have achieved together. As Yuri said, I'm James Greenhouse. I lead our compiler performance team at ARM. Our team looks at performance across all of ARM's markets and tool chains and does everything we can to make software in the ARM ecosystem fast. The Burst compiler is a great fit for these goals. It gives us a powerful tool with which we can leverage the performance characteristics of ARM's latest microarchitectures and make great use of the features that they provide. One such feature is the NEON instruction set. NEON is a packed SIMD vector architecture. It was first introduced with ARM v7a and it was enhanced in ARM v8a. It allows you to perform computations across multiple data elements in parallel a NEON register holds multiple elements of the same data type in lanes, and the NEON instructions perform the same operation across those lanes. For example, in this slide, we're showing the behavior of a NEON FAD instruction from ARM V8A operating on 32-bit floating point values. Each lane in the first vector is added in parallel to the corresponding lane in the second vector and stored in the destination register. That means that rather than computing one floating point addition in an instruction, NEON is allowing us to compute four floating point additions in a single instruction. These vector uh, instructions are executed efficiently by the processor, which allows for speed ups of multiple times over the scalar equivalents. The NEON instruction set 
provides hundreds of operations which are useful in computing fields like physics, uh, image, video, and digital signal processing, compression, artificial intelligence, and more. Whenever you need to perform the same computation in parallel across a large data set, NEON is a good fit. Our goal is to make NEON as accessible as possible to developers and in turn to allow as much user code as possible to make good use of the NEON instruction set. In my team at ARM, we spend a lot of time thinking about how we can do that. By far the most convenient way to use NEON is to just let the compiler make good use of it on your behalf. The technology that allows this to happen is called auto vectorization. An auto vectorizing compiler looks at the memory access patterns and operations of a program and looks for opportunities to make use of a vector instruction set. In the example code on this slide, we have a loop using floating point data types and adding two arrays together. An optimizing compiler can take this code and turn it into something which makes use of the neon add instruction that we introduced on the previous slide. On a large, powerful, out of order processor like Cortex X1, this can allow for up to eight parallel additions every single cycle. Across a vectorizable algorithm, this quickly adds up to huge performance improvements. One of the exciting things about the Burst compiler is that it's able to leverage the auto vectorization frameworks present in LLVM to automatically introduce NEON instructions where the compiler thinks it will result in increased program speed. This lets us leverage our ongoing investment in LLVM to further benefit the ARM ecosystem. While auto vectorization is great and you get it for free from your compiler, it doesn't always make for the easiest programming model. The compiler isn't always able to figure out that it can make use of vector instructions. As a result, sometimes you need to take more direct control over your program performance. For users who know that they need to access efficient vector instructions, the Unity vector classes in Unity Core give a high level interface to vectors of two, three, and four elements of integers or floating point data types, along with a large number of mathematical functions that operate on those vectors. Keeping with our example from the last two slides, this slide shows the implementation of a vector addition over four floating point values. Burst is able to take this code and compile it to the same NEON instruction as we saw in the previous examples. Yuri spoke about intrinsics earlier. These are an even more powerful way to program for your hardware, giving direct access to the ARM instruction set. So these are the three vector programming models available for programmers to use. You might ask which is the most appropriate for your projects. The great thing about auto vectorization is that where the compiler is able to apply it, it comes for free. As compilers get better over time, more and more patterns are able to be recognized by the optimization passes, and so code continues to improve. At the same time, that's going to put you at the mercy of the compiler. If it doesn't yet know your patterns, it might be missing an opportunity to use vector instructions. In particular, this can happen when the layout for data which the compiler expects differs from your data layout. Auto vectorizing compilers like to work across arrays of data. For example, for a vector addition, they're happiest if you have all your X coordinates together, all your Y coordinates together, and all your Z coordinates together. But more often in games programming, you want to express an operation over vectors, and so you, you would have an array of coordinates. In this layout, the X, Y, and Z coordinates are scattered across memory, and an auto vectorization compiler might look at it and see a problem that it has to solve. It might use gathering operations to get back to a vector of X, a vector of Y, and a vector of Z. This can create inefficiencies, or in the case of a larger data structure, it can prevent auto vectorization entirely. When taking explicit control of vector code generation by using a programming model like Unity's vector math routines, you're able to ensure that maths happens the way that you'd expect. That retains the logical benefits of keeping an array of structures layout while ensuring that you get efficient code generation. If you can make use of this explicit model of vector programming, you gain predictability over the NEON code generated and improved portability between platforms. Of course, the downside is that you now need to make a manual intervention to rewrite your code. 
Neon intrinsics represent the furthest point on this continuum. They require a complete understanding of your algorithm, of the ARM instruction set, of the performance characteristics of your target hardware. And therefore, they have a high barrier of entry. The payoff for this is detailed control of code generation and the potential to use exactly the right instruction in exactly the right place. The really great thing about uh, Unity's model is that it's providing different points along this continuum. If you're a beginner looking for free code generation, an auto-vectorizing compiler is going to serve you well. If you're an expert looking to extract the absolute peak performance out of your target devices, then you have Neon Intrinsics as that escape hatch into low-level programming. So today we've given you an introduction to the power of Neon technology available in all ARMv8A Android devices and providing packed SIMD technology, which allows you to exploit the data level parallelism in your physics and machine learning workloads. Projects made with Unity can use both automatic and explicit vectorization techniques to target Neon and unlock additional performance. Before we finish, I wanted to talk about the future direction of travel for the ARM architecture. In 2016, ARM announced a new vector instruction set called the Scalable Vector Extension, known as SVE. SVE2 came out in 2019 and expands SVE with fixed point and DSP instructions. It expands on NEON by introducing the concept of scalable vectors. NEON has two possible sizes, 64-bit vectors and 128-bit vectors. In SVE2, you don't think about your vector size. The assembly language allows users to write against multiple vector lengths. As ARM and its partners develop new processors, they have the choice of which vector length to implement, from 128-bit all the way up to 2048-bit. This is the scalable in scalable vector extensions. In the NEON example earlier, we saw a NEON add that operated on four 32-bit uh, elements in a packed 128-bit vector. In SVE, the number of 32-bit elements varies with the vector length. For example, a 256-bit vector has eight elements in a vector register, and a 512-bit vector would have 16 elements in each vector register, and would be able to compute 16 elements in parallel. The concept of SVE is that programmers write their vector code against a single target instruction set and have the performance of that instruction set scale transparently as different decisions are made on the appropriate vector width for different processors. Programmers looking to take advantage of this nature of SVE need to see the world in terms of vector instructions, which may be loading and storing different amounts of data, depending on the vector length on real hardware. For this reason, SVE has been designed to allow a compiler as much scope as possible to use auto-vectorization techniques. The instruction set provides new features such as predication to expand the range of loops which can use vector acceleration. When SVE2 is available in devices, we intend for compiler support to also be available, both through an explicit model, expanding on the Neon intrinsics available in C and C++ compilers today, and through auto-vectorization from compilers which implement the SVE2 target. ARM invests substantially in compiler technology across our ecosystems. We provide improvements to open source toolchains like GCC and LLVM, and improvements to ARM Compiler 6 and ARM Compiler for Linux, our commercially supported products. We do that to ensure that the latest versions of the ARM architecture have fully featured code generation, unlocking the latest performance and security features from ARM's processor technology. If you were able to catch my previous talk at this conference, bringing out the best of the ARM architecture for C and C++ applications, you'll have heard me talk about the pace of change in the ARM ecosystem and the rate at which compilers for the ARM architecture are improving. ARM's making these investments into foundational compiler technologies in order to ensure that the developer experience on ARM is as good as it can be. Our compiler development complements our strategy of ensuring that developers for Android have access to great tools for performance analysis through ARM Mobile Studio. ARM Mobile Studio is a suite of free-to-use tools which help game and app developers to reach more of the mobile market by efficiently optimizing and debugging high-end content for all Android devices. It includes ARM Performance Advisor, bringing effective profiling advice, Mali Offline Compiler for compiling shaders and kernels from OpenGLES, OpenCL, and Vulkan, 
ARM Graphics Analyzer for tracing graphics performance issues easily, and ARM Streamline Performance Analyzer for a view of performance across both the CPU and GPU. The Studio can be used for standalone applications and with projects made with Unity. To learn more about our mobile studio, you can visit the Our Mobile Studio page on developer.arm.com, or you can attend Pete Harris and Joey Gaskin's session at this conference, Profiling Mali Graphics for Mobile Game Efficiency. Arm has a vision of our products working better together in a whole system solution, which brings out the best performance of the applications your users care about. Through our collaboration, ARM and Unity are working to showcase the potential of your Unity projects through better tools and compilers, giving a great developer experience when targeting ARM devices. Our partnership is already delivering benefits to users of the Burst compiler in Unity, who are now able to take advantage of Neon Intrinsics to take direct control of code generation targeting Neon, allowing them to extract maximum performance from their application. Today, we've given you an introduction and tutorial to using Burst on ARM devices to improve the performance of your applications and games. I'm really excited to know that this compiler technology brings out the power of the Neon instruction set implemented by all 64-bit ARM devices in the Android ecosystem. And I'm really excited that it's available in the Unity editor today, ready for developers to easily start building richer experiences for their users. Thanks for attending our session. Um, I hope that we've inspired you to, to try out the Burst compiler and to start using it in your projects to unlock even better performance on ARM-based Android platforms. We'll now be available for questions.